Yeah, truly how long. Benjamin, thank you. Meantime, Vice President Kamala Harris is in Poland hoping to resolve a diplomatic spat over a plan to equip Ukraine with MiG-29 combat jets. It's a move the Pentagon calls high risk. With us now, national security and foreign policy expert Ari Aramesh. Ari, maybe you can explain the high risk part of that to me because I, I don't quite get it. What is the difference between equipping the Ukrainians with equipment to actually anti-aircraft equipment, knock planes out of the sky, but not giving them the planes to do pretty much the same. Well, I think the issue is means of delivery. Now, I, I think the Pentagon is cherry picking intelligence and 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 and, and sort of increasing or uh, well, what the real sort of risk risk level is and should be uh, for the very purpose of not trying to get involved. But uh, let's discuss the two options. Now, Javelin and sh uh, Stinger short range missiles, uh, for the most part, their delivery is a lot is easier. You can you know Ukrainians can just come to the Polish border, pick these up and go. Uh, these are not large MiG. 29 fulcrums. Uh, secondly, to deliver these MiG, MiG 29s, these are uh, Soviet era or Soviet made uh, uh, warplanes that the Ukrainian pilots are trained uh, to fly, you would have to fly them from point A to point B. Uh, point A, the place from where the, 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 the planes should be flown to Ukraine, mm -hmm. be it Poland or beat the Ramstein Air Force Base, will be a hostile point of origin. Having said that, this discussion should not even be public. I don't understand why our uh, discussion over arming Ukraine covertly has now become a public debate on Twitter. This should have been done months ago. This should have been done weeks ago. This should have been done by picking up a phone call in D.C., calling Warsaw, uh, call, call, calling Bratislava, calling any of those four countries neighboring Ukraine, uh, the four NATO countries that have about 70 MiG-29s. you got Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, and Poland. Poland has different estimates, but 23 to right. 27 make 29s. This should have been done a long time ago. We have the means. And by the way, this is for all practical purposes, Trace, a proxy war. What is a proxy war? A proxy war is when we are not sending troops directly to fight country right. A or country B, but we're arming the local resistance to fight the aggressors. The Russians right. did that to us. The Chinese did that to us. We were fighting in Vietnam. They helped the Viet Cong and, the, and then the NVA. This has been t done since time immemorial, and, Ari, and I don't understand the reason, why. Part of the reason are now being discussed that they on don't Twitter. want these things to be out there. They're, they do want it to be out there is because a lot of critics say because they're signaling Vladimir Putin saying, look, we're not doing anything wrong. We're not going to cross that line. Well, he, he, he keeps crossing red lines. The United States keeps saying, no, we're not going to cross that red line. Uh, uh, John Kirby said this. You mentioned about, oh, they can't move this stuff. It's too hard to move these planes. Uh, John Kirby of the Pentagon said this about this. Watch. We assess that adding aircraft to the Ukrainian inventory is not likely to significantly change the effectiveness of the Ukrainian Air Force relative to Russian capabilities. Yeah, so that's what he's saying. It's not about moving. It's about capabilities. It's not going to make them any stronger. Well, I mean, with, with all that's... the respect. With all the respect to Admiral Kirby, I think his assessment is completely wrong. Ukrainians already have MiG-29s, and they're flying very few of them. The reason why is they're saving the bulk of their air defense for an onslaught against Kiev that's going to come any day now. So in order, now look at the convoy. We've been talking about this convoy north of Kiev, 40 miles long. Well, guess what would have happened if the Ukrainians had some air superiority? Guess what would have happened if the Ukrainian had some air defense capabilities, in addition, just surface to air missiles, mm -hmm. but some actual fixed wings to defend Mariupol against Putin's bombing a maternity ward? I mean, the, the, the idea that this is not going to enhance Ukraine's defensive means, I think is just ridiculous. It's just flat out right. ridiculous. Uh, but the idea I, that I understand the risks involved getting MiG-29s or Sukhoi-27s in, I understand the, the risk involved getting them from a NATO partner and giving them to, to right. the Russians, but also with every action comes some risk. Uh, I don't think Putin, while he's homicidal, I don't think he's suicidal. And also he's surrounded by a, a, a decent group of generals, not decent in the sense that they're good people, yeah. but, the, but the, 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 the military minds that might tell him, <laughs> hey, if you retaliate against NATO countries, we will invoke Article 5 and we will hit you back. So giving the Ukrainians what they need. And by the way, MiG-29s is not the only thing. You know, the port of Odessa, no, this is the third totally port. Totally get it. This, this, I totally get yeah, it. Yeah. This is the third. Yeah. Anyhow, go ahead. 
No, I was just going to say, I mean, you totally get it. And the whole point is, is that, you know, a lot of people have said, look, that you're exactly right. The Ukrainians are saving their high weaponry for the big battle. But the question is, why isn't Russia? I mean, they, they want to shut down the skies. Why isn't Russia dominating the skies the way they did in Syria? It just doesn't make any sense. I got 10 seconds if you can answer it in that time. All right. Well, you know what? They have better air superiority. They have better air power. But again, we can give the Ukrainians what they need. And it's not just MiG-29s. The port of Odessa, third largest city, we can provide them with anti, anti ship missiles. And they can and we can train them on that rather quickly. And they can target uh, Russian ships right there in the Black Sea and make this a lot more costly for Putin and his aggressive army. Yeah. Ari Aramesh, great to have you on, as always. Thank you. Well, Ukrainian President Zelensky reportedly surviving nearly a dozen assassination attempts this week alone. We'll talk to a former Secret Service agent who protected three presidents about the exact risk that that man is facing. Next.